O oh Lord, hear my voice, for I have called to you, be my help. Do not abandon or forsake me, O oh God, my Savior. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. Let us pray. O God, strength of those who hope in you, graciously hear our pleas, and since without you mortal frailty can do nothing, Grant us always the help of your grace, that in following your commands, we may please you by our resolve and our deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Sirach. Like a fire there appeared the prophet Elijah, whose words were as a flaming furnace. 
Their staff of bread he shattered, and his zeal he reduced them to straight. By the Lord's word he shut up the heavens and three times brought down fire. How awesome are you, Elijah, in your wondrous deeds, whose glory is equal to yours. You brought a dead man back to life from the netherworld by the will of the Lord. You sent kings down to destruction and easily broke their power into pieces. You brought down nobles from their beds of sickness. You heard threats at Sinai, at Horeb avenging judgments. You anointed kings who should inflict vengeance and a prophet as your successor. You were taken aloft in a whirlwind of fire in a chariot with fiery horses. You were destined, it is written, in time to come to put an end to wrath before the day of the Lord, to turn back the hearts of fathers toward their sons, and to reestablish the tribes of Jacob. Blessed is he who shall have seen you and who falls asleep in your friendship. For we live only in our life, but after death our name will not be such. O Elijah, enveloped in the whirlwind. Then Elisha, filled with the twofold portion of his spirit, wrought many marvels by his mere word. During his lifetime he feared no one, nor was any man able to intimidate his will. Nothing was beyond his power. Beneath him flesh was brought back to, into life. In life he performed wonders, and after death, marvelous deeds. The word of the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord, you just. The Lord is king, let the earth rejoice, let the many isles be glad. Cloud and darkness are round about him. Justice and judgment are the foundation of his throne. Fire goes before him and consumes his foes round about. His lightnings illumine the world. The earth sees and trembles. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord, before the Lord of all the earth. The heavens proclaim his justice and all people see his glory. All who worship graven things are put to shame, who glory in the things of naught. All gods are prostrate before him. Alleluia, alleluia. You have received the spirit of adoption as sons through which we cry, Abba, Father. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, In praying, do not babble like the pagans who think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them. Your Father knows what you need before you ask him. This is how you are to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. If you forgive others their transgressions, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, neither will your Father forgive your transgressions. The Gospel of the Lord. So, if you happen to be an ancient Greek or an ancient Roman, you knew full well that trying to make a deal with your pagan gods was probably not a good idea. The whole idea behind superstition was superstitio, keep God up there, let him stay up there. I just want to sit here, farm my little farm, have my little vineyard, and be happy with my life. When gods get involved in your life, it becomes very messy indeed. So if you wanted something, you needed something from a pagan god, what would happen oftentimes is that the pagans would make kind of this long, drawn out, almost really illegal contract because you didn't want any loophole for your pagan god. Uh, you didn't want him for find a little way to trick you and mess with you just because you annoyed him into giving you what you wanted. So you didn't want something like a monkey's paw 
thing, for example, where you said, well, you know, I, I would like my wife brought back to life and then you get a zombie or something like that. No, you want it to be very exact. You want to say, this is what I want. This is what I will do. And so forth and so forth. Pages and pages and pages of legal language. Well, this is really what our Lord is, in a sense, talking about, to not babble like the pagans. We sometimes have the Protestants who say, well, you know, you Catholics just repeat many prayers, but one of the things we repeat is our Lord telling us, this is how you are to pray. It's not so much the verbiage, it's, in a sense, the spirit. Oftentimes, our own Protestant brethren will be the ones who just do way long, drawn-out, spontaneous prayers, which, sure, they are more spontaneous, I guess, in some ways, but... They usually tend to have a lot of filler language as well, like, God, you are just, just this, just that, just that, and so forth and so forth. So it's not really that much better. Or it's definitely much better than the pagans who, in a sense, did not trust God, did not have a relationship. They rather wanted a contract, not a covenant with God. A covenant is, again, kind of marital language, nuptial language. That's not the kind of thing you want if you were a pagan. The last thing you want is God in your life heaven help you if you quote unquote entered into a nuptial contract a nuptial matrimony with your God your life would be very very difficult then so this is in a sense what our Lord is re-emphasizing to the Hebrews he is telling them you know what I'm asking of you as Micah so famously put it but to do justice to love with mercy and to walk humbly with thy God all those other things are in a way to help guide you. But this is really what God wants at the very basic thing, a basic covenant, a basic relationship with you. If you have that kind of relationship, as our Lord tells us, you can, you can call God Father. You say, Abba, Father, our Father. St. Paul reminds us in the Alleluia verse, you have received the spirit of adoption, so you can call God Father. Call him Abba. So our Lord gives us the model to pray. It's very basic. It puts out certain conditions, not conditions that they must be filled or otherwise you will be smote, but rather things that you ask of God and leave the rest up to his will. We oftentimes enter into the confessional, hopefully soon again, but we enter into the confessional with this kind of almost the same spirit. Well, I have to confess these things. It's almost like we think we have a a, a plea bargain, and then I have to write out everything I did exactly as it occurred so the plea deal is legitimate and legal. That's not the kind of spirit we are entering into. It is a spirit where we talk to God as Father, where we look for a spirit, an openness, beyond certain just legal ramifications, legal words, into an openness of heart, openness of mind, openness of spirit. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. It's about as simple as that oftentimes. Other things are things, again, to guide us, to help us to avoid evil. But what is that condition then? When we ask God for something, and we can and we should because he is Abba Father, then he asks one thing of us, that we do the same for others. In other words, God is ready to forgive you. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Our Lord puts it very simply at the end to stress it. Forgive and you will be forgiven. It's as easy as that. Don't put long preconditions on forgiving your brother or sister. Don't put if this, then that, if, if, if. We are not dealing with with lawyers here in prayer. We are dealing with God, a merciful God, a kind and just God who has shown us greater patience and mercy than we even have any right to begin to ask for legally. But we ask in that spirit of sonship. And if we are sons then, if we are through Christ sons in the Father then, then we have to recognize then that our fellow man or fellow woman then is also likewise a brother or sister in Christ. Do we make this then our prayer that complicated? We simply bring before God those things we need, those things we ask for others. Or are we trying in a sense to write a legal 
contract. We try to keep God far away from us with such legal verbiage. No. Open your hearts, open your minds, open your soul to him. Ask for what you need. But at the same time, be open to what he asks of us in return. So let us bring before our Father this day all our needs and petitions. Let us pray for the church throughout the world that she may continue to be an instrument of mercy and hope. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all those in the front lines of fighting against the pandemic and all other diseases. We pray to the Lord. For all those who work for justice and peace, we pray to the Lord. And at this Mass, we remember especially Miriam Watanabe, and for all the intentions that we hold in the silence of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord Almighty living God, hear all the prayers and petitions we bring before you this day, asking that you infuse in us a true spirit of sonship, that we may truly be called worthy to be, I'll call you Father. For this and all things we ask through Christ our Lord. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who in the offerings presented here, provide for the twofold natures of human nature, nourishing us with food and renewing us with your sacrament. Grant, we pray, that the sustenance they provide may not fail us in body or in spirit, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him you have been pleased to renew all things, giving us all a share in his fullness. For though he was in the form of God, he emptied himself, and by the blood of his cross brought peace to all creation. Therefore, he has been exalted above all things, and to all who obey him has become the source of eternal salvation. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise, for through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. 
Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on this constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. With this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Andrew, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you, in your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, to give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God. Be 
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Holy Father, keep in your name those you have given me, that they may be one as we are one, says the Lord. Prayer for spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. As this reception of your Holy Communion, O Lord, foreshadows the union of the faithful in you, so may it bring about unity in your church through Christ our Lord. Amen. Once again, our procedure for communion is we come up one row by row. Please follow social distancing, keeping a space of six feet between you and any, any people not of your household. And then on this side by the ambo, we receive either on the hand or on the tongue. And on this side by the cathedra, we receive on the hand only. And please depart immediately after receiving communion so we may have an opportunity to keep our social distancing and also to sanitize the church immediately after Mass. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in the peace of Christ.